夠快啲人數。We have already formed a quorum. It is also time to start. So let's continue with the hearing before I deal with the. Matters originally set on the agenda. Let me just say that according to Rule seventy nine two, generally speaking, we conduct public meetings unless、um, the chair decided decides otherwise. In accordance with our、uh, procedures、uh, under Rule twenty six, we need to、uh, have our meetings with behind closed doors. Say, for example, in relation to the writing up of a report. Just now, our members have decided that on this occasion it is quite、uh, different. So, despite the uh, um, the general rule, which may say that this shouldn't be、uh, done publicly, we believe that in the following、uh, we should have a public session. But before I start, I would like to say that we are only opening up the meeting from now on. So, for whatever that was discussed in the Prior closed door session. Please don't disclose the deliberation. Um, uh, but it is acceptable if you make the same point that you have made during the closed door deliberation. Now, first of all. Uh, we have dealt with the、uh, complaint about the、uh, suspected disclosure of closed door deliberation, and that item is request for Honourable Kenneth Leung to resign from the Select Committee. When we start, I would like to say that just now、uh, we made a hasty decision to open the、uh, session. Therefore.、Um, Probably you would only have put on one interpretation uh, at around five、um, forty-five, but we do have、um, the English Cantonese uh, interpretation service. Can you flow? You have raised your hand.、Um, I would just like to take the initiative to say that、um, I would like to declare what I have included in the letter sent to you on the twenty-first of May, twenty seventeen. A、uh, declaration of interest from other members, Mr. Lam Chat Ting. I've decided to declare the following: About two years ago, in relation to C Y Lung's suspected corruption in the case of U G L, I was the informant in that、uh, report made to the I C C. If there aren't other declarations of interest, then I would like to. First of all, talk about the suspected disclosure of closed door deliberation. On the 17th of May, Mr. Junius Ho、uh, wrote to me saying that、uh, for the closed door meeting held on the 15th of May,、um, it was suspected that there was disclosure of information. Mr. Ho thought that、uh, there was a serious case of misconduct, as members might have、uh, disclosed the information. Uh, well, uh, the legal adviser has come up with an initial briefing. Maybe in a moment, I would like to invite the legal adviser to talk about、uh, what we can and what we cannot do in relation to the leakage of、uh, confidential items. Mr. Junius Ho, do you mind if I very quickly、um, brief you about the nature of my complaint?、Uh, because the members of the public may not be aware of the、uh, wording of my complaint. I can quickly read it out. Well, basically, on the 15th of May, we agreed that for the meeting held on that day, it should be held behind closed doors, and then、um, it was、uh, unanimously supported. There wasn't any conclusion in relation to our deliberation, and before any conclusion was made,、uh, everything should be kept confidential. However.、Um, Dr. Helena Wong led the Pan Democrats in、uh, hosting a press briefing, and she disclosed the information of the closed door deliberation, and it was extensively reported in the media. It is most unsatisfactory. Whenever friends of the media made inquiries with me, I upheld strictly the rule of confidentiality. I also believe that there were members of the select committee who、uh, deliberately leaked the information to others. Uh, Elvin Yang, Lam Chak Ting, Kenneth Leung, Men Xiu Qin have also been interviewed by the media in relation to the content of the closed door deliberation. There were comments and、uh, discussion. It is an obvious violation of the rule. In particular, for Mr. Wan Xiu Qin, on the 16th of May,、um, he attended a RTHK、uh, radio program, and、uh, he blatantly talked about. 
Mao Cha Si Wai Leung, and also the Australian enterprise of UGL in relation to their agreement, and uh, at a um, um, uh, program uh, he talked about it. Well, in fact, directly, indirectly, he deliberately um, in, uh, incited others to talk about this matter. So it is an obvious violation of the rule of confidentiality. Therefore, in relation to those four members, I'm lodging a complaint because they have committed a very serious act of misconduct. In relation to the rules of procedure, uh, in relation to Rule 811, and also in relation to our paper, CB bracket 2, 904, 1617 bracket 02, uh, I understand that we shouldn't uh, disclose uh, any closed door discussion as well as the uh, papers that have been um, tabled. Therefore, if um, any member or members of the select committee failed uh, to abide by the rules, they sh could be reprimanded or condemned. So I formally make a complaint hoping that the chairman will deal with the alleged misconduct seriously and they should be penalized strictly. That's why I'm lodging the complaint. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Let me get a piece from the legal advisor first before I open the floor to members for uh, comments. Yes, legal advisor. Thank you. First of all, let's uh, look at the uh, procedures of the um, select committee, and then I will provide some information. And I can also talk about the precedents. Well, according to the select committee's um, rules and procedures in relation to paragraph 26, well, in fact, um, we shouldn't uh, disclose any uh, closed door deliberation. So that's in relation to paragraph 26 of our rules and procedures. And then for rule 81, in relation to premature disclosure of information, um, it is said that the meeting could, by way of a motion, um, reprimand the relevant member. Uh, but of course, Hi Chairman, please understand that for Rule 81, it means that um, um, a committee uh, is taking evidence under Rule 80 in relation to the summoning of witness. In it, that, that means that uh, when the committee um, summons a witness, then there are certain powers related to that. Of course, you know that for this particular C committee, uh, we haven't been empowered um, to invoke uh, section 9 of the LCPNP ordinance to summon uh, witnesses. Therefore, Rule 80 and 81 do not apply to this select committee. So uh, perhaps the Secretariat may also want to supplement to what I've said in relation to precedent cases. Yes, our clerk uh, would you like to supplement to our previous practices. In the past, there were select committees that had their uh, internal deliberations being leaked um, or suspected uh, leakage of their deliberations. And then press releases have been issued um, regretting the acts of leaking the information. Members and the relevant parties, including secretaries of staff, have been asked to sign a confidentiality undertaking. So in relation to Mr. Junius Ho's complaint in the light of the LA's advice and also the clerk's information about the president, uh, I open the floor to you, Priscilla Lam. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank the Secretariat for uh, making available uh, Room 3 uh, at such a short notice. Thank you for your efforts. Um, Mr. Ho has talked about uh, the question of disclosure of deliberations. We are members of the Select Committee. Well, I think we are fine with uh, information that can be disclosed. We can talk to the public. However, within the Select Committee, if we have already agreed that certain things should be kept confidential, in particular, I have heard this time and again, that is, we do have conventions. Say, for example, when we're dealing with 
things like uh, conflict of interest or disciplinary um, issues, we should first of all keep things confidential, and then the select committee or the committee will take a collective uh, view and see what should be done. I've had the experience of uh, taking part in many committees, and there were cases of disclosure of confidential information. But on this occasion, uh, we believe that this is exceptionally uh, unsatisfactory. This is because we haven't completed the deliberation at the meeting. We were hoping to finish the deliberation at the following meeting. Generally speaking, um, as to whether there was a case of conflict of interest or whether a disciplinary issue was at stake, um, generally speaking, at the end of the deliberation, we would talk about ways to uh, deal with it and make a um, sort of announcement. We haven't completed the deliberation, and yet uh, some members uh, publicly commented on the uh, disclosed information. Uh, but then they were members. They uh, publicly commented on such information. So it is an a matter of uh, some anonymous uh, parties have uh, published the information. By having public comments, they are confirming the information. In other words, they are denying the select committee the opportunity to have a deliberation of the matter. Well, um, for the members involved, in particular, Ho Jun Chao has already resigned, and yet we still have not had the opportunity to have a meeting. So you can tell why we believe that disclosure of confidential information can disrupt our proceedings and can destroy the trust among members. I've been with the LegCo for three terms already. I have taken part in many different select committees um, across the political parties. Uh, and also in relation to the subject matters of our criticism, never have we encountered something like this. In the past, this close chair wasn't really that serious because most uh, information was leaked to uh, friends of the media so that they have something to write about. Um, but uh, every member will be asked and we also made inquiries with people who may have access to such information, like staff members as well as the secretariat. But then for members to make a public comment, so it seems that the uh, disclosed uh, confidential information has been confirmed. So the media would think that it has been confirmed and then it is something that they can write about. Therefore, we say that for members of the select committee, we as members of the select committee, we have to air our dissatisfaction. We haven't had the chance to have deliberation within the select committee. So I just want to share my point with you. Well, Maybe one day we can say that uh, we have a discussion and say that we would want to open the meeting. And then there will be the maintenance of trust, but they steal the gun and then uh, there is a public trial and yet we haven't had a chance to continue with the deliberation. Therefore, we have to take a very serious view of this matter. Thank you. Mr. Wen, you have indicated to speak. Yes, I also agree that we have to take a serious view. Just now, Mr. Junius Ho, um, aired some allegations, and I believe that he's too arbitrary and he hasn't clarified the facts. I won't comment on other members, but he was alleging me that is uh, I had a discussion on the 16th of May uh, within a radio program. Please ask him to specify in what ways have I disclosed the confidential information um, on the. 15th of May in the afternoon, Siwa Leung and Ho Jun Chao came out to confirm certain things. Say, for example, Siwa Leung confirmed that uh, at 44 places he made amendments. So he made the comment publicly. Ho Jun Chao also admitted that he had um, um, communicated with Siwa Leung. I commented on such a basis. Never have I referred to what has been said within the select committee. Yeah. The select committee may be discussing other things as well. So how come that the Mr. Junior so can be so judgmental? Can he point out specifically what I said at the RTHK program, which he considered uh, was a breach of the confidentiality rule? And I have been commenting 
on remarks uh, made publicly by Mr. Long Chunying and also Mr. Holden Chow. I didn't confirm anything, and I didn't uh, link my comments to the content of the discussions at the Select Committee. So I find uh, Mr. Junior So's uh, remarks very um, surprising. He said. Um, he made these allegations against my remarks, so I felt very aggrieved. So please be fair, Chairman. And also, as what um, Dr. Priscilla Leung said, well, well, every member should be subject to um, further um, clarification because everyone could be uh, suspected. And some pro-establishment members found it a good thing, I would not name them, but um, that doesn't mean that um, anyone from the person's party will um, disclose confidential information. So I hope that they could uh, adopt the same uh, standards. And I couldn't uh, make any allegations or accusations against Mr. Junis Ho without any uh, concrete evidence. I think he's being judgmental. Um, can he be very specific as to what remarks I made that day uh, which reflected that I have disclosed confidential information discussed at the Select Committee? The Select Committee's duty is to investigate into uh, C.Y. Lung's uh, incident. So I don't want another um, an other angle to the whole thing, and that um, we will have to investigate into who has leaked the information. So I would like to maintain the dignity of the Select Committee and maintain the normal operation of the Select Committee in the future. And I think um, I would give you everybody a chance to speak freely. And I won't um, like to say, um, look into or study into who actually um, leaked the information. And that should not be done, especially when we don't have any concrete uh, evidence. Okay, so can I uh, now invite Mr. Kenneth Lang to speak? Thank you, Chairman. I would like to say something on Mr. Junius Ho's letter. I have uh, some specific questions. The paragraph 3 in his letter mentions about myself uh, and Mr. Elvin, Elvin Young, Andrew Wang, and Lam Chak Ting, and they, uh, we uh, accepted media interviews, and we discussed uh, deliberations in the closed-door um, meetings. Well, which day did the media interview happen? Uh, uh, at what location, which media were involved, and what uh, actually did we discuss? Was it um, um, talked about by uh, Kenneth Leung, Lam Chak Ting, myself, or Andrew Wang? And of the um, remarks, uh, which part of it were um, deliberations uh, in the closed door meeting? I would like to find out exactly what he was referring to, because um, that four different members maybe might be speaking to the media at different times, at different locations. So let's not have generalizations out there and said um, that we have leaked information. So I don't think that's a scientific observation, and that's not evidence-based either. Chairman. Mr. Lam Chuck Ting. Chairman, I haven't raised my hand. Mr. Ma Fung Kwok. Well, I thought uh, the secretary has jotted down your name. Anyway, Mr. Ma Fung Kwok. Chairman, I would like to follow up on uh, Mr. Junius mm -hmm. Ho's uh, letters and the, uh, the issues arising from it. In fact, I've joined this uh, select committee, and the chairman has decided that the meetings be held closed doors, and according to our rules of procedure, so I think if um, members are of good integrity, they should abide by the rules. Since the chairman said that it is a, a closed door meeting, so everybody should um, abide by that rule. But regrettably, I don't know who uh, leaked the information. I don't know. And such kind of acts are really immoral. And. Uh, uh, wanting of integrity. I think we should uh, reprimand such acts. Now, there have been developments after that, and many colleagues 
have uh, spoken on this incident repeatedly, and I don't think these uh, remarks are, are appropriate. A dozen or so reporters have approached me, and I refused to comment. I think we should abide by the confidentiality rule, or else we would be undermining the very important um, um, image of this electrical. And then we would be hurting the mutual trust among us, and I think we should reprimand such acts. Now, apart from that, I would like to ask the chairman. Now, since the information has already been leaked, have we taken any reasonable steps to try to ascertain why the information was leaked? Uh, what are the reasons? Has the secretary tried to understand? Has have they find uh, tr tried to find out why and come up with uh, some conclusion or else uh, then it will be no more of the story and that would not be good because it will hurt the mutual trust of the select committee and it would be very difficult difficult for us to go on with our work. I don't know whether we need um, closed door meetings in the future and if that is needed, how can we guarantee that um, such closed door meetings will not be turned into open platforms. Now, uh, for those who abide by the confidentiality rule, um, it will be very unfair to them because they can't make uh, any comments or discuss the issues held in the meetings, whereas for other members, they can speak freely, um, speak whatever they like. So this is most undesirable. So, Chairman, can you give some guidelines as to how we should tackle this? Now, um, we have uh, discussed many times whether we should have closed door meetings or not, and every time I said that I won't vote on it. Since the chairman has made the decision, and I will respect the chairman's decision. So, can uh, I we ask um, allow the other member to speak first? Uh, point of order. What point of order? Uh, Mr. Ma said uh, something about uh, what he did in the meeting last time. Would it be considered as a disclosure of um, deliberations in the closed door meeting last time? Can I um, uh, speak again of what I said in the closed door meeting previously? As I said in the beginning, I have said that uh, we should not um, say anything about the discussions in the uh, closed door meetings previously, and or, or also the voting results. Um, but then, since some members have already uh, done that, so I won't be too harsh on on you, or else we will uh, continue debating on and on. Uh, Mr. Ma, do you have anything more to say? So, Chairman, I would like you to give us some guidelines as to how we should uh, further proceed with the investigation work now, with so much um, still being. Uh, Unclear. Um, how can we proceed with our work, Mr. Ma? You are a veteran member. You should know well that without sufficient evidence, there is nothing much we can do. Of course, we can say maybe um, ask each and every member to um, on what whether they have uh, leaked the information. But I think it's just a, a formality. Without sufficient evidence, that approach won't work, and we won't be able to arrive at any conclusion. Uh, we know that the legal advisor and the secretariat in the past have um, um, asked uh, the uh, members to sign an undertaking, but that's just um, to remind members that it's important that they should keep inf information confidential. Maybe we can uh, discuss later on as to whether such an undertaking um, is needed this time. But we don't want to get um, into the or d dwell on to who actually uh, leaked the information. I, I'm afraid we don't have the um, terms of reference uh, to allow us to do so, and we should not be uh, judging uh, on members or as to whether they should speak certain things, and not speak other things. All right. So, uh, Mr. Wong Kwok In, first round for you, Chairman. Mr. Candice Leung. Uh, raised a series of questions, and he was uh, querying uh, Mr. Junior Ho's letter. Well, well, his, uh, we can actually um, select, uh, establish a select committee to investigate into his questions. Um, does uh, Mr. Kenneth Lang represent um, all the pandem members here when he speaks uh, what he said? 
Mr. Ch uh, Chairman, you said that you don't want to um, s establish another committee to investigate into who leaked the information. But if it is really the wish of several um, members, we can actually set up a task force to look into the leakage of information incident. Mr. Kenneth Lang has raised a series of questions, and I think maybe we, we may as well set up an investigation committee um, to study into his questions. Well, please uh, tell me whether you would like to do that. Now, coming back to this um, leaking of confidential information. On this incident of Mr. C.Y. Um, Leung and Mr. Holden Chow, although he's resigned, he used to be the vice chairman. And I think all along, the select committee has not made its own conclusion. Why? That's because somebody leaked the deliberations at the closed door meetings, and the several pan demo demos uh, commented. Um, the incident in a high-profile manner. I, I, I was not saying that you leaked the information, but you commented on the incident in a high-profile manner. And this kind of approach, well, indirectly proved the authenticity of the leaked information. And that also made it possible for the community and the media to have a public trial before the select committee studied into the matter. And the select committee didn't have any uh, time to discuss this and arrive at its own conclusion. And before the select committee did that, Mr. Holden Chow was compelled uh, to resign. And up to today, the select committee has not drawn up its own conclusion. And several members have commented in a high-profile way the uh, leakage incident. And I think that uh, people have, uh, or myself at least, have lost confidence or trust in the work of this uh, select committee in the future, because a lot of our work uh, is built upon the basis of mutual trust. Now, after this incident, I think, well, the mutual trust is gone totally gone. So that's why, Chairman, I wrote to you and uh, asking that this uh, select committee be disbanded and we have a new composition for the select committee so that people can, well, have the, have the impression that this is a brand new committee and we will not have m any more mud uh, wrestling here. But then the legal advice said there was no such mechanism to disband the select committee. But up to now, I believe some members, like uh, Mr. Junius, who he was not, um, he convinced, uh, he was not convinced. He he thinks uh, that uh, the select committee should be disbanded. Well, without mutual trust, and when the members in the committee are not trusting each other. I don't know how the work can go on. And it will also undermine the credibility of our work in the future. So these are my observations in relation to the leakage of information incident. Now, as to whether we can disband the select committee, while well, the uh, legal advisor said something at the closed door meeting, I'm not in position to quote him. So maybe the legal advisor at this open door meeting can repeat what he said at the closed door meeting so the public understand what the position is. So if um, mutual trust is a reason to disband the, a, a certain body, then I think the whole ledge code should be disbanded and not just at this select committee. Now, the legal advisor has, has, has mentioned some hurdles about disbanding the select committee. Maybe the legal advisor can uh, say something here to um, uh, ease people's concerns on this aspect. Legal advisor. Now, as members uh, know that uh, the select committee was uh, established because uh, last year on the 2nd of December, Mr. Kenneth Leung and Andrew Wang, in, in accordance with ROP 20, Oh, uh, 21 presented a petition, and the uh, uh, according in accordance with Mr. Leung's uh, 
petition. We are se selecting this uh, select committee, and 28 members uh, st stood up, and in accordance with uh, ROP 26, so the petition uh, was um, com commissioned to the select committee. And then in accordance with ROP 78, uh, two, the president should, um, the president, the chairman of the HC should um, decide on the number of the uh, committee members and also the chairman and the vice chairman. And so, on the basis of that, the chairman of the HC has uh, set up this committee and appointed the members. Now, with regard to disbanding, and it. In relation to ROP 78.4 and 78.5, it says that um, after uh, it has completed consideration of the matter before the end of the term, uh, or before the, then it will disband. If it is thought that they cannot finish the work, like the matter or the bill, before the end of the term, then uh, the committee shall make a report to the council. According to uh, 785, at the end of a term, every select committee of the council shall be dis dissolved. So, uh, subparagraphs 4 and 5 um, specify um, the conditions under which uh, a select committee will be disbanded. So, there isn't a mechanism to disband the select committee unless we can meet the uh, conditions in the two subparagraphs. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Junius Ho to speak first, second time, because you have indicated your wish before the other member. Well, let me talk about the development of the case, and then I will respond to the observation of the LA. Well, for the select committee, uh, we have it is about the investigation into the UGL, and then um, the, there is this case about Houghton Chow arising from the closed door uh, meeting, and then it has given rise to the third uh, incident, that is disclosure of confidential information. Of course, I don't want to have a select committee within a select committee, and then we have uh, committees after committees, but then this is the reality. Now, when we talk about the um, credibility of this particular select committee, if we give people the impression that we are not being serious, and if we haven't upheld um, our undertaking, and if we have departed from it without taking a serious view, then I just wonder whether we are doing harm to ourselves or whether we are trying to justify our acts. I think this is important. It is serious. Uh, Andrew Wen and Kenneth Leung uh, would want me to be more detailed in my letter. Of course, I can. Between the 15th and the 30th, or between the 15th and the 19th of May, um, I can, of course, um, talk about each and every piece of media report. I don't mind. I insist that the case of my complaint should be followed up. We have to deal with the disclosure first. Otherwise, I don't think we can make any move forward. As I have said, uh, it was said that Houghton Charles' uh, case was serious, and so we had to uh, had a we had to have a co closed door session. Before we deal with that, we can't come back to the core business. Now, for today, I've started uh, clearly to say that I don't mind opening this meeting to the public. For the four members that I've complained against, we have to check whether they think that it's unfair to open the meeting. Well, they have said that they don't mind. So it is within their prerogative. Now for the disclosure, I think we need to take a very serious view and we should handle it seriously as to the credibility as well as the room for cooperation. As I have said, before we handle this matter, we can't go back to the theme of the select committee because it involves the basis for cooperation and the credibility of the select committee. When we are under a cloud, then it means that we can't move forward. I agree entirely with what Mr. Wang Kuo-kin has said. That is, um, for the way forward, either we 
deal with the disclosure and get a satisfactory explanation. I think what you can do, Mr. Chairman, is that you shouldn't um, take it lightly. I think everybody should make a declaration so that it will be legally binding. Everybody should make an oath and declaration in accordance with Cap 110. In other words, everybody should be made to say whether he or she has taken the initiative or whether passively uh, has disclosed the information from the closed door session. I don't think it is difficult. We just want to have something put on record. Should there be a false declaration? Then, of course, uh, the matter can be dealt with in accordance with the law. So it is not that difficult to handle it in a serious manner. Now, it is said that I should come up with the details of my complaint. Yes, give me time. I can assure you that I can have it ready by the next meeting. For the disclosure of confidential uh, information, it should be handled seriously, and there's a way to go about it. And I believe that. We have already agreed uh, to uphold confidentiality. I think it is a power that we should address. Next, I would like to talk about the way forward of the Select Committee. Chair, if you don't mind, I just want to remind members that now that the Select Committee's uh, credibility has been weakened, we should ask the question whether we should disband the Select Committee. Well, the Select Committee has been formed in accordance with the advice of the House Committee Chair. Now that the Select Committee has suffered from a structural or uh, a flaw, I don't think we need to follow now uh, 78, 4 and 5. That is, either we finish our job or we wait till the end of the term and then we dissolve the Select Committee. Rather, we should invoke common sense. We now know that the bow and the cradle have been rotten, and then I don't think uh, it is going to do us any good. Rather, it will do us more harm to continue. So maybe the legal advisor can consider the following. That is, perhaps you can refer us to Rule 92. That is, perhaps we should write it to the President. That is, uh, we want to have a procedure when our rules of procedure do not provide, so that he makes a decision, so as to ask the House Committee Chair Lady to reconsider the composition of this Select Committee. Uh, this is my reply for the time being. Thank you. Rule 92. 92 says that uh, for any matter not provided for in the rules of procedure, then um, we can invoke this rule. I think that's for the sake of uh, dealing with filibustering. If you uh, always talk about common sense, it means that we can dispense with the um, ringing the bell, etc. Well, I think uh, the legal advisor can tell us what factors should be considered and what about Rule 92. It's better to defer to the legal advisor. Uh, I'll try to supplement and then our clerk as well as the Assistant Sec General General Secretary can also um, supplement. Just now, the Chair has asked me to comment on Mr. Ho's point, that is, investigation into the disclosure of confidential information. If we ask members to make a statutory declaration, well, if we look at the terms of reference of the Select Committee, I don't think uh, we have the power to mandate members to make a statutory declaration. So we can't force members to make such a declaration. But of course, for members um, on their own may want to take the initiative to do certain things. That's up to them. But then on the part of the Select Committee, we haven't got this procedure. We haven't got this power to force anyone to make a statutory declaration. As to the um, uh, dissolving the uh, Select Committee, I've already referred to Rule 78.4 and 78.5. Well, there is already an express provision to say under what circumstances the Select Committee uh, can be dissolved. When there isn't any provision to talk about that, and if we try to dissolve the Select Committee, uh, owing to other reasons, I'm afraid it is difficult, because we do have an express provision as to uh, how 
the select committee can be dissolved, and it doesn't provide for dissolving it for other reasons. I'm afraid um, this is not the case. For Rule 92, as the chair has said, rule, the rules of procedures have already provided for the dissolution of the select committee. I cannot say on behalf of the president of the LegCo as to what he can done, what is within his powers, because what I say will not bind the president. I just want to repeat that as far as dissolving the select committee is concerned, please refer to Rule 78, 4 and 5. Well, on the basis of the suggestion of Junius Ho, yes, we don't have the power to do so, but I just want to consult members of the select committee. Do you agree to voluntarily make such a declaration? It doesn't matter. This is one of the options that we can consider. If you can't indicate your position initially, it means that it may not be a viable option. Mr. Lam Chek Ting. Mr. Chairman, just now, a few of us, including Pan Democrats, have spoken. We asked the complainant, Mr. Ho, as to what information we have disclosed, time, um, place, and the persons involved, as well as the media. He has spoken at length, but I haven't got any specific information from him. Well, in fact, he is making a complaint. It is a serious matter. I don't think he can say that, well, I write in first, and then I will supplement uh, some other information. When did you write the letter, Mr. Ho, lawyer? Um, two weeks ago, for two weeks, you have not been able to gather sufficient uh, evidence, and yet you are having a free hand, and then you are saying that we are disclosing confidential information. You are a lawyer. Before you air any allegation at anybody, you must have evidence. Now, I try to understand you from your correspondence. You have said that um, on the 15th of May, there was the meeting. At the end of the meeting, the media extensively reported on the content of the meeting. But what was reported by the media on that day it was about this paper, Mr. Chairman. CB bracket 2, um, 1285 slash 16 to 17 bracket 01. That's the paper, right? What, what sort of paper is it? This paper is the private collusion and conspiracy between Ho Chen Chao and Siwa Leung so to interfere with our work. This is a public document, and the uh, pro-establishment camp has been emphasizing it. Yes, the paper itself is a uh, public document, but then the tricky points are different. They are conf that's confidential. Well. I have made I have made inquiries with the media. I asked them whether they had the chance to come into contact with this paper. Well, many legal members have received an electronic copy of this paper. Many friends of the media have this project. That is, every day they try to look at the papers available. Um, at the electrical every day via their members. So please confirm. Even though it is an electronic copy, it is still a public document. If somebody reads the read the document, the electronic copy, and if they could spot the tricky bonds, is it a matter of disclosure? No, because it's not Hilden Chow, it's not C Y Leung who told us personally. Rather, someone spotted it. Someone spotted the revisions by the C O O C E, um, and then you called a closed door meeting. Others had the chance to read it. It's not strange. It's not surprising. Holden, um, Junius Ho, you're a lawyer. We have to talk about evidence. Do you or can you about the possibility that someone read this uh, paper and then they checked the yeah, emails and then they were very um, um, they were able to spot um, the CEOCE uh, reference? So how can you uh, pinpoint the four of us and accuse us of disclosure?
Also, the pro-establishment members have been practicing double standards. They said that we are undermining mutual trust and we are disclosing confidential information. But they've never um, reprimanded Holden Chow for undermining pub, um, mutual trust. And Holden Chow is presenting this paper amended by Si Wai Lang. They've never reprimanded him, not up to today. Is um, Mr. Ng Chao Pa the FT, from the FTU who had uh, expressed uh, some dissatisfaction? But did the uh, others uh, do that? No. Don't practice double standards. This is exactly the kind of acts that will undermine mutual trust. And you are not accusing them. You are like a, a scarecrow, and uh, you are accusing the pandemics for leaking the information without any basis. So the last word from me. Pandem uh, the pro-establishment members have said a lot. Uh, Mr. John Junis Ho and Mr. Wong Kwok Kien have um, spoken from the bottom of their heart, and they said that if um, the disclosure of information issue is not resolved, there is no way that the select committee can go on with its work because there is a lack of mutual trust. And he's exactly making the same remark in the first meeting. He said that uh, C. Y. Lung's uh, term is about to expire, so let's not uh, spend too much time on this. Well, ultimately, I mean, you don't want to investigate into it. Well, if you don't want to do that, resign from the committee. Let uh, the others who want to do it uh, continue with the work. You accuse us of um, disclosing the confidential information, but for the pro-establishment camp members, you are doing this all the time. Though Wai Kwok was the uh, chairman of the PWSC, and his uh, WhatsApp, well, there was this WhatsApp message um, telling the media that uh, Low Wai Kwok was uh, trying to um, extend um, the meeting time. So there was there were a lot of WhatsApp messages being um, floating around. So. Pro-establishment camps uh, WhatsApps were also being uh, floated around as well. So please, let's uh, look at the facts and evidence. No, uh, we haven't re openly reprimanded Mr. Hoden Chow because he has resigned, so there is no need to follow up as to the meeting on the 15th of May. Maybe the media would um, learn about the tricky point themselves. Well, I would. I can only assume that before the fifteenth of May, nobody um, disclosed any information. But after the the meeting on that day, uh, everybody knew about this. And uh, well, actually, the uh, some of the members found it difficult to uh, ascertain what this uh, CEO CE was about. Uh, Dr. Priscilla Lang, sorry to keep you waiting, Chairman. First of all, on this uh, disclosure of information issue, uh, this uh, select committee doesn't have a PMP power. We could not summon or compel um, the members or the subject of investigation to provide information. Now, um, with regard to the select committee on Mr. Cam Nai Wei, um, they didn't have a PMP power either. But then. The chairman back then, whenever there was a disclosure of confidential information, the chairman would um, ask each and every member who had contact with the information or the documents. And there can be another approach, as mentioned by Mr. Junius Ho. You can make the undertaking that you haven't disclosed the information. You can do that, but nobody can coerce you into doing it. I remember back then, Mr. Kam Nai Wai, and he was given the chance to uh, whether swear or oath and when he gave evidence. Um, people were allowed to do it or otherwise. I think it uh, has to do with uh, the the rules of this select committee itself. Since so many members, as I said at the outset, have um, something about this, and uh, Mr. Lam Chak Ting asked why we haven't openly reprimanded Mr. Houdin Chow. The meeting on the 15th of May was a closed door meeting. I made some comments at the meeting, and 
and I, I said certain acts were inappropriate. But then I left early that day. Well, I would like to say something about uh, double standards. When I uh, sat at the House um, Committee meeting, I said that I would have to like to leave early and uh, let's not make a decision. Then everybody criticized me for uh, uh, disclosing the information. I felt very offended. I mentioned this particularly because the clerk told us that for the FC and the council meeting, and they are open meetings. And so after certain considerations, uh, the select committee has decided that it will hold meetings behind closed doors. But then there was the suggestion that maybe we could uh, hold a press conference and members can um, make their comments um, at that uh, press briefing. So. I think uh, we said last time that we should give an account of all these. So Mr. Ma said something, and then he was uh, immediately accused of uh, disclosing the information. Now, if the the people complained against were not from the opposition camp, then what would you think? We think we should hold more clo uh, open door meetings because we have to um, let people know what our considerations are, and we're th this is something that we haven't encountered before. So we have sh we should have a, a good discussion on this. So I think, um, Chairman, you are in a difficult position, Mr. Lam Chuck Ting. Well, had a. Uh, a wealth of experience in investigations, and he said, um, "Could there be so many coincidences?" So let's take the perspective of a reasonable third party. There could not be so many coincidences. But then, as what the chairman said, who actually did this? Maybe everybody should be asked, or everybody should uh, make a declaration. Chairman, it goes to show that uh, you are dealing with the matter in all seriousness. But I don't agree with your saying that uh, no matter how hard you work, you won't be able to ascertain the person disclosing the information. I think we we still have to do it. Um, go on with investigating it, and. You should. Deal with this. Maybe the chairman, uh, you should uh, ask every member, every member in the secretariat. I think that's necessary because this has uh, disrupted our usual procedures. Well, Mr. Houghton Chow is a relatively new member, and we should learn a le lesson from the incident. But then it has disrupted. Um, the the entire proceedings, and we uh, keep on having this public trial. We haven't yet discussed the Kenneth Lung's uh, issue, and then the, some twenty pan democratic members has asked have asked us not to discuss the Kenneth Lung issue. So how can we go on with our work? Are we being respected? How can the select committee play its role? We have to ask these questions. We're sitting here in this select committee. And if we go by my suggestion, then it, well, if we go by that suggestion, it means that uh, you are posing pressure on the select committee. Well, the select committee should comprise pan Democrats and also the pro establishment camp members. We should not differentiate uh, between the different political factions uh, when we work on this select committee. So, I'm maybe repeating myself, but I must have stressed that the chairman, you should deal with this uh, matter seriously. You should consider Mr. Junius Ho's recommendation. So, I understand 
you. I am not inclined one way or another, and I would not treat this lightly. I just invited first the legal adviser to tell us the um, difficulties in relation to the rules of procedure. I have also said that uh, Mr. Juni's hose can be considered, but it seems no member would like to speak on it. Now, in the interest of time, before I ask the next member to speak, can I remind um, the Secretariat uh, to remind us about how um, the undertaking of confidentiality rules should be uh, should work. So, I think um, we should further discuss this. And I asked, uh, I, I promised uh, Mr. Wong Kok in that we should adjourn the meeting by 6:30. Uh, Please uh, make uh, the best use of your time, Mr. Elvin Yang. Well, you are talking like uh, Martians, someone from Mars. Mr. Junior has a host letter. Well, he said that there was. Uh, well, we said that there was no evidence. I don't want to repeat it. Well, they, he said I deeply believe that somebody disclosed information. Well, it's, it's only his belief. Should we entertain his belief? Do we have any time to entertain his belief? This is a uh, num point number one. Point number two. Mr. Junior, so a lawyer. He was uh, quoting ROP eighty one one. And the legal advisor said that uh, this is a wrong quote of the rule. Well, it's, it's, my, it's my saying that it was uh, on a wrong basis. And we should not be uh, discussing things on a wrong basis. And also, on disclosure of information, uh, 16th of May 2017, Singtao Daily, Lee Wai King, I start, or Starry Lee, said that. When Paul Chair asked Holden Chow, then it was only the matter was exposed, and Holden Chow was asked to give the in and outs of the incident. And in the meet at the meeting on the previous day, it was found that uh, at the uh, DEB that uh, somebody uh, disclosed the information. What uh, Mr. Junius Ho is driving at here? Should he just uh, want to store the matter and drag the feet? So what? Is the ultimate goal that he wants to achieve? Do we, does he want everybody uh, to keep on having meetings day after day? Well, what you are doing is paralyzing the select committee. Are you going to go on like that, Mr. Elvin Young, for yourself or for the non-establishment um, camp members? No. Would you be willing to do a statutory uh, declaration or undertaking to say that you you didn't disclose the confidential information? This is a practicable um, solution. What is the content of this declaration? Is it the case that everybody will be asked to sign it, including the DAB members? Because so many members have come into contact with this document. So, well, to be fair, so every person who has been involved in this incident should take part. So are the four of you, are you willing to do it? A statutory declaration um, specifying that you have not taken part or you have not disclosed the confidential information. Mr. Avignon, what's uh, your stance? I would like to know the content of the undertaking or the declaration or who will, will, will sign it. Well, it's just simple. Uh, you haven't uh, disclosed the information, Mr. Lam Chukang. Before we did that, do that, or rather, we have to understand the um, full picture. Who actually has come into contact with the information? So we have to f clear upfront who were involved. Of course, we understand it. Who discovered this first? How did you know? Um, who um, who else was involved uh, during the process, and as to uh, who in the uh, CEOC's office have been involved? What are their roles? How much do they understand? And also for the DAB, how many people are have been involved? What are their roles, and so on. And also for the legislators, ourselves and our assistants who have been involved in the incident. I mean, is this what you want to do? Can that be done? Well, talk to us after 
after you have ascertained that that can be done. Well, Mr. Uh, Lamb, you ha used uh, you to be an investigator. You you said a lot, but you uh, really haven't answered my question as to whether you are willing to sign it. Well, I don't know what I'm signing up to. So, and if. If I ask you to sign an undertaking um, that you have not disclosed the WhatsApp messages of the pro-establishment camp during the constitutional reform process, I don't. I don't think it's a. There is any point in that. Well, let's try to um, clarify the whole thing first. I think it's almost time that we should adjourn the meeting. Shall we extend the meeting um, for 15 minutes? If we can uh, resolve this issue, well, let's resolve it today. Okay, let's continue next time. Thank you. Okay, you will protest the next time, baby.